Okay, so I already cut a little bit of a pattern out here. This is just a piece of cardboard. I figured it would kind of sub in fairly well for the uh, leather. So that's the shape of the axe. I understand you need a little bit, leave a little bit extra. And I think what I'm going to do with this is uh, going to make it basically that shape. And then I'm going to have a strap that will run from there to the, just under the back of the, uh, the axe head here on the handle. And I'll put a snap on it. So what I think I'm going to do also is, because I don't have any rivets, and if I just put two pieces together and stitch it, I'm worried about the axe cutting the stitching. So I'm going to probably use a three piece, three pieces or three layers. So there'll be the underneath layer, and then I'll have a strip here, and then I'll have the on, the on top layer, if that makes sense. And also I think what I'm going to do just to make less stitching and everything else, is in, instead of having the pieces individually cut, I think I'll have the two outside pieces actually wrap around the top. But I'm not sure about that yet. That, that might be okay, it might not be okay. I guess I'm going to have to figure this out as I go along. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little pattern here, and I want to put the, the split side of the leather on the inside towards the blade, and the smooth side on the outside. That seems to be the way they're mostly done. I see them anywhere so I figured that's what I'll do. So, hmm, now that I think of it, maybe I should just stitch the whole thing instead of trying to do the fold over because I'm afraid with the fold over here it won't want to fold right. Okay, change of plans. I'm going to make separate pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Sharpie, as you Americans call it, in Japan they call it a magic marker or magic good, and I'm going to take my magic marker here and I'm going to Trying to avoid all these holes that are already there. Uh, I'm going to mark out some pieces. And then I'm going to cut them out with my, uh, with my razor knife. Okay. I don't think my razor knife is really sharp enough to actually cut through this in one go. So uh, I've got to put my safety glasses on. Actually, I need them to see as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to... Well, maybe it'll cut through. Let's, let's give it a go. But I think it's probably better to do two cuts. Do one light cut on the top so you can kind of make sure that you follow the line. Like I just missed there. And then do a, a second cut that's a little bit... Uh, stronger, let's say, so that you can uh, cut all the way through the leather. I understand that the guys that are real leather workers, they probably have some incredibly sharp, specially shaped blade that cuts through this kind of leather in one go, but I'm a woodworker, I'm not really a leather worker. Hmm. That was actually easier than I thought it would be. Now I just realized I screwed up and made a mistake. <laughs> I have two uh, left sides now. Probably somebody's screaming at the video when I started marking them out saying, Hey, hey, you need to flip that thing over so you got one other side. Okay, let's do that. Okay, I can still use this for the uh, arc here, so it's not a total loss. left side and the right side. <coughs> that's better. Not exactly the same, but <coughs> that's why I left them a little bit large so they can be trimmed later. And then this piece I'm going to cut along here so I can make kind of a, a, a second layer that fits in there. Okay, 
and then this piece will go on top and then I'll stitch it here and I'll stitch it here and I will have a sheath like that and I'll put a strap around like that okay I gotta get my glue and some other things ready so you'll have to excuse me for a moment okay I'm making this up as I go along so this may be all for naught but my thinking is I'm going to stitch it here and I'm going to stitch it there just a little bit and I thought it would be better to have this part here that's going to kind of be a I don't know what you call it, like a a buffer against the blade so it doesn't cut the stitches I thought it was better to cut it a bit short so that when this is on here it will press down tight against there and against there just, I don't know, well, I don't know, we'll see how it goes So. I'm going to get my glue out. I'm using, this is in Japan, it's called uh, G17 and it's a uh, contact cement. Um, generally works pretty well. So I'm going to just kind of get right into it here. I'm going to lay this in there like that where I think it should go. And mark that there. Mark that there. And then the other side basically do the same thing, try to get the same spacing just so I have an idea where to put the glue so I don't put loads of extra glue on now I think I'll glue one side on first and then I'll glue the other side on second Bear with me. Okay, uh, this is going to take a couple minutes to dry, um, so I'm going to have to leave for a couple of minutes, so I'll be right back. Okay, it seems this is nice and dry now. You can see it's not sticking to my fingers. So I'm going to take this piece here, and it's going to go on, actually this one's going to go on this one. Try to follow that edge as well as I can, and then I'm going to, uh, hang on, I need to get my roller. J roller is very useful for doing this kind of thing. Well, you could pound it with a hammer too, but this is works really well. So that's stuck on there now for good. So now I got to put one more coat of glue on this side because I couldn't put it on because it was you know already glue on the other side. Again, the glue is now dry. I can touch it, you see, it doesn't do nothing. But this has already got glue on it. So I'm going to get glue on here and glue on there. I'm going to line these up best I can. Roll them together. And they should stay put for a long time to come. So that's already that part of the uh, sheath basically done. Now, here afterwards I'll trim it and I'll try burnishing it. Never done that before, but I'm gonna give it a go. And uh, now I gotta stitch it. Now, somewhere in my workshop, I have one of those uh, spools of uh, the kind of thicker um, thread that is used for like sail repair and stuff. And I just can't find it right now. Anyways, I got this black cotton thread here that's pretty thick. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this instead. And I don't have a hole punch this small to make little, little holes like that and I don't have some way of grabbing a, a needle and sticking it through so I'm going to kind of cheat and I'm going to uh, just use a, uh, a drill and I'm going to just drill a bunch of holes so let's we'll see how that goes I tried to keep the holes evenly spaced as I could just doing it by eye this will definitely have a handmade look to it now I'm thinking about how the axe head fits in here this has got a, I figure it's better to have the top part here closed down so this fits in there and then with the strap around the bottom like that it's going to hold it in place but I gotta think about when this comes out 
And I guess there's going to be enough space in the bottom because it's nice to have this bottom part pinched together too. Now when I undo the strap I should be able to just take it straight off. Um, but I don't want it moving around so that's why I kind of want to, I'm thinking about how far along here on the top I can go. You know, if I, right there I've only gone about three quarters of an inch, maybe I should go another couple holes and that would just kind of keep everything together more, but I can still, just kind of testing it here, I can still get it in and out. I put it in here and kind of bring it in there and the bottom will miss. You can add a couple more holes. Double row of holes. So now I got to get some stitching done. So I'll thread some uh, thread a needle here and try to do a little bit of stitching. Um, I think I'm still okay to put the um, I've got these uh, exactly what you call these things these snaps. I think I'm still okay to put the snaps on uh, with it like this. Oh, maybe I should put the snaps on now because. Uh, I should be able to open it enough, I guess. I'll do that kind of last. I don't actually have any rivets, and I don't have any of those Chicago rivets like uh, Cody on Wrangler Star uses. I looked for them here in Japan, and I found them, but I got to buy a box of 50, and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I will buy some eventually, but right now I just thought for this, what I'll probably do is just put a snap on both sides, and one side I'll, I'll I put it very close to the end of the strap, so it'll basically stay there. The other side. I will leave a little bit of a tail so it's easier to grab and pull off. So, because that's just what I have, you know, I gotta use what you got, is what they say. So, I guess that's gonna go somewhere about there. Okay, I'm gonna do some stitching and come back. Okay, I got my thread and my needle. I'm gonna, it's not very long, so I'm gonna just try to do maybe the top and the bottom. I don't know much about doing this, but I'm pretty sure you're supposed to take a piece of beeswax and rub it on your thread. It makes the threads kind of hang together, kind of two of them will kind of stick together better and they'll slide a little better through the leather maybe. I don't know. I don't know even know what to do about a knot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start over here at this top edge and I'm going to just do a very basic stitch. I'm going to leave a bit of a tail that maybe I can wrap under the end afterwards. Uh, I'm sure that people who know about leather making more than me, which will be just about anybody probably has some good advice here for me and uh, uh, if you'd like to offer up some of the advice boy I'd sure like to hear it um, I don't need anybody telling me that you know you suck or you're stupid or trust me I know that nobody has to tell me that but if you got some constructive criticism or some advice or some ideas boy I'd sure like to hear them Okay, what I'm going to try to do here is, this time I'm going to actually start by putting the tail in, in one of these ends here where I can kind of tie it off to start with. And because uh, I'm going to go from here down to there, so I don't really have a easy way of uh, going back and dealing with the tail like I did last time. So I'm going to just kind of do a, just a basic, I don't know, half hitch or whatever you want to call it in through some of the existing threads that I just sewed in here and uh, anchor the tail of this thread that way okay so I got it all stitched up there and under there and there's there uh, certainly not their prettiest stitching, but uh, with the glue and the other thing, it should work. Fits pretty nice. Now I have a strap that I'm going to go that with, and that'll be the basic thing. So now I have to punch or drill a couple of holes here and do this. <coughs> Excuse me, do this stuff here. Um, so I'm going to just come back and do that quickly. Okay, I changed my drill bit in the drill. I got my punch ready here, or my uh, 
you would call it, the uh, thing for setting these uh, snaps. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just kind of as a trial run, I'm going to put one in the end here into a hole in the middle. I have to get me a leather punch, I guess. This side will be a snap side, so that means I'm going to have one of these and one of these cappy deals. Like that. Put it on there like that, and I take this and put it on there like this. And then I take I think this side goes like that. On this side. Honestly, it's been a very long time since I've done this, so I'm not exactly sure how this works. Okay, so it's obvious I'm missing a piece here. I think the piece that I'm mainly missing is this kind of cup that holds the uh, the rounded dome part here. So I went over my lathe and I took a piece of this hard plastic uh, POM. It's called uh, very hard plastic, use it for bearings and food equipment, and I just put a little dish in there. See that on the video. So now I'm going to just uh, try this again, see if it works. The other end I got a set. So this thing here, I figure on my axe with the sheath on there like that. And imagine that one is there somewhere. And this one comes around to about there. So I'm going to just mentally make a mark there. I can drill right through both things to uh, get my spot for my hook there for my. See if that works. Seems to hang on. That goes like that, and that's going to go like that. Should hold pretty good. Okay, so I got to put another male male version on that. I need uh, one of those through there. Make sure to take that off. And, uh, Maybe I'm going to open that up, one of those like that, another male one there, well, that one looked okay, they're not great, they're certainly not pretty, boy I certainly will say that. Now, I want to make this pretty, not well, not so tight, but I want to make it a bit tight because, you know, this leather is going to stretch over time, I can imagine. But it's not really got to be on there super tight. It's only got to be on there tight enough to just kind of hold everything in place, you know, so it doesn't fall off. Because I'm looking at this now and I'm thinking maybe this should have been down here lower. Pull down there lower maybe. Maybe that's the wrong spot. Pull down here. Tell you what, I'm going to drill another hole and I'm going to try putting it in both locations. That's the extra super deluxe version. Yeah, that looks like a hole is better there. Okay, put a mark on that. I'm going to go, that's exactly where the hole is and I think that's going to see here. I don't know if that's going to stretch that much. Oh, I'll put it right about where it should be, I guess. Let's see how that fits. There you go. 
go. It snaps on pretty good. Well, I don't know. I don't think that's bad for a first try. I'm going to cut this and round the end of it off. This is a little bit long. I'm going to just slice it a bit. Now, camphor these corners, and then I want to do a little work on here to make this a little neater, and then I'd like to try uh, putting some beeswax on there and burnishing it a bit. So, I'll be right back. Well, I bet you didn't expect to see some wood turning on my uh, video about making a sheath for my axe or my hatchet, but I uh, found out the burnisher is a powered thing often. I guess they do, can do it by hand, but it seems to be like a spindle with a bunch of grooves in it for a different sized piece of leather. And I thought, well, I have a lathe. Why not just make one? So this is a piece of uh, beech, pretty hard wood, and I'm just going to quickly make it round and put a couple of grooves in it and see if I can make my own burnisher. I look at the size of that. I guess the uh, burnisher wants to be just a little bit narrower than the. Uh, this will work okay for that. And then for this tripled up piece, it wants to be just a little bit narrower so that the uh, edges of this rounded kind of groove will kind of round over the edge of the leather, I guess is the understanding is the reason. So I'm going to just widen both of those ones just a little bit. So I don't have any saddle soap, but what I do have is something that I use for my wood turning. And this is uh, beeswax and mineral oil mixed together. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put this on I'm going to put this on the tool here, on the burnisher. It kind of makes sense to put some on there and kind of soak it in first. And I guess I'm also going to put it on the leather before I actually burnish it and let it kind of get into the edge a little bit. That makes sense. Let's turn this on. And Well, I guess that kind of works. I'll show you here on the larger one on this end. Gotta watch you don't overheat it. And as I found out, you can make it smoke. But it nicely rounds over the edges and it doesn't make it all perfectly the same, I guess, but it uh, seems to just improve the look of that a little bit. I don't really know if I need to do more than that, but anyways, that's what that is. Kind of interesting. So, uh, well, I guess that's it. I hope uh, you found that interesting. Well, there it is. There's my restored hatchet, or refurbished hatchet, with a leather sheath that uh, may not be so pretty, but I think it'll do a good job. Um, Seems to work pretty good. Not that I'm going to get a lot of chance to use this living in downtown Tokyo, but you know, I do own four chainsaws, so who knows. Anyways, that's it. That was a lot of fun. If you followed along this long, thank you very much. Like I said, if you guys got some good suggestions for leather work or anything else for that matter, please leave in the comments below. And again, another uh, hat tip to Cody at Wrangler Star for giving me inspiration to do this and, uh, and to do a video about it. Thank you very much. I'll see you again.